now that we have managed to connect to the server, let's see in this video how we can actually get that data from the server and display it here. So the first thing I'm going to do here is actually to go to connection.php and remove this. So this is uh, very important to remove if you don't remove this. Uh, you will have this string inside of the each response that you get from PHP because we are, of course, we need to connect first. So each time you connect, you will get this string here with your response and it's going to ruin the, the object completely. So definitely remove this and save this file. And yeah, now we are done with this connection to PHP. Now let's see how we can uh, get that data from the server. Now uh, I'm going to uh, create a service here which will do that HTTP request and the reason why I'm going to use a service is that remember before when we talked about this you know if I do my HTTP request in the controller and now uh, I need that data in another controller then I need to repeat that process again and again and again but if you do it in a service then we can simply uh, pass that service to, to any controller function via dependency injection. So let's go to the service and here let's create a file called a db.js and here I'm going to say app.service the name is db and here we put a function and right away let's add this function inside of the array and here I'm going to uh, create a function which will get the, the data for us. I'm going to call this function get books equals function. And uh, now we need to do inside of this function uh, the HTTP request which will get the data. And to do that I'm going to use a HTTP service. So let's inject it here dollar sign HTTP. This is a Angular service which will allow us to do the HTTP and uh, you have to add it here. Now please be careful here we need to add it inside of the array or it's not going to work. And now here we can use that HTTP and inside of that service we want to put an object. Now this object will take two parameters. The first one is method and method is get. And the second one is URL, and URL is going to be a path to uh, this PHP script, getbooks.php. So here inside of this script we can see, uh, first we connect to the server, then here I have a, a query string which I store in this variable. And what this query string does is basically it selects everything from books table right we have that table here which contains all of the books and I have stored here uh, precisely 30 different books so we are getting all of them and uh, then if result is successful create an array and then iterate through that result push the data inside of that array and then uh, first parse it so we can get the, the JSON object from that array and return it back to our JavaScript. So as you can see it's a extremely simple PHP script there, there is no validation or anything and uh, now we can go here and just add the path to that script so php slash get books dot php all right so HTTP service is now going to get all of our books but what's going to be returned here um, actually Angular is going to create a, a promise here so uh, the way if, if you're confused about promise what promise is it basically a container for your um, asynchronous operations right it's it's an kind of an object which is going to wait for your data to come in and then it's going to store it inside of that object and uh, then we can use a then method what this method does is basically uh, it waits for the data to come and when data comes, because it's asynchronous operation, right? We don't know when data is going to come from the server. When data is come, we can use then method to do something with the data. So here we pass a function response. And then I can console 
log that response. Now this is not going to run because we have just defined the function we need to call it somewhere. And I think the best place to call this function is actually inside of uh, this controller that controls this page. Uh, it's home controller, right? Inside of the home controller we define this title and this template here. So there is the best place actually to call this function. So I'm going to take the name of the function. Actually we need to pass the name of the service first. So let's go to home controller. And we can add it here via dependency ejection. And then let's add it here also. And then I can use that service get books here. So now we call this function which is inside of that service. And now if I reload the page, we will see that console log here, open the data, you will see all the books here. Wonderful. So now the next thing I want to do is to uh, take this data here and store it on the scope inside of home controller. And then when I have it on the, on the scope, then I can iterate through that array and then create templates of the books, right? So this is the next thing we are going to do here. And to do that, I'm going to actually return the data from here. So we need to return this. And then because this is inside of this oh, function here, I need to return this too. All right. And now if you call this function, we will have the data here. But again, that is going to be a promise. So if we console log, we will see that yeah, it's, we are getting the, the promise there. So here's the data. And to get the data from this promise, as we learned before, we use that method function. And here we say response. Actually, I'm going to say books because that's what we get. And then I'm simply going to console log those books here. So now if we reload the page, we can see that Oh, let's, oh, yeah, books.data. So books.data. Reload the page. Yep, we got that array here. So now that I have my uh, books array here inside of the home controller, the next thing I need to do is to save it here on the scope. So scope.books is equal to this array. And now when I have it on the scope, I could create a template and iterate, use ngrp to iterate through this array. And then for each object inside of that array, we can uh, render different book. Now to do that, we need to go to index. And here you will see a template. It's coming out. This is a template of the book which we're going to use. So let's cut this out. And uh, I'm going to create another folder which will hold this template here inside of app. I'm going to call this folder views. And inside of this folder, create a file, call it uh, displaybooks.html. Now this template needs to be HTML file. So put this here. Let's sort this out a little bit. All right. And now we need to go to our routes and tell the routes to this time you're going to use template URL and the URL is going to be app slash view use slash display books dot HTML. All right. So now when we go to home page, uh, this template from from this uh, from this file display books is going to be rendered inside of our uh, ng view and then we will run this home controller now on this home controller we we got our books here right so that means that we can simply say here ng repeat equals to book in books and i'm going to add here truck by index. All right. And now if we go to our page and reload that page again, 
Wonderful. So for each book inside of that array, we are getting a template, which right now is hard coded. That's why we see the same data everywhere. But important thing is that it's working. It displays uh, one one template for each object uh, inside of that array. So the only thing we need to do now is to template out uh, those values here and show the proper values and that we are going to do in the next video.